All right, let's get started. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to day four and the final day for our guest speakers of Shark Week 2021. Right off the bat, let's do a quick test of audio and visual. Actually, we already did that before, so let's skip that. Um, as always, you can use your the Q&A box or the chat box to ask any questions throughout the webinar. And Rob, who is uh, a veteran of Zoom, he knows how to find your questions. He'll do his best to answer them by the end of the presentation. As always, my name is Keith here with Shark Indicators. We've been involved in the Ninja Trader ecosystem since 2011, providing tools like Bloodhound and Blackbird that help traders be more productive and in control of their own trade systems. We're always looking for ways to add to the trader's toolkit, and this webinar and Shark Week is a big part of that mission. Before I pass it off, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contain substantial risk and is not for every investor. And past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So be smart and careful. Rob is president of Axiom Research and Trading Inc., the mother company to the oiltradingroom.com and indicatorsmart.com. Rob has been the largest e-mini S&P trader in the world at various times and has won the prestigious Robin's World Cup e-mini trading championship. He has been a trading system developer for nearly three decades. He is a proving researcher, trading system developer, trading educator, presenter, and mentor, helping others to achieve their dreams as traders. So Rob, with that, you can unmute and share your screen. Let's get started. Hey guys, thanks for coming in today. Thanks Keith for the introduction. And uh, does everybody see the screen all right? I hope so. Give me a, give me a yes if you do. Cool, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, we're gonna cover a lot of really cool stuff today. Guys, I'm gonna uh, build a system. This is kind of like three webinars in one, maybe more, yeah. Um, so we're gonna take some broad strokes over the whole thing. Trading system design, building, and analysis with a focus on the difference that makes a difference. I'm gonna cover some things that kind of key in on uh, what's behind building a good system in alignment with what you know Keith is saying and everything. Uh, what's a, you know, uh, what are methods that you can use to build uh, good trading systems, yeah? And so um, with that being said, Let's go ahead. We already covered the risk disclosure. I usually throw in here past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. There's a risk of loss trading futures, but also don't use the grocery money to trade. Yeah. Um, at the end of the webinar today, I'm going to give you a link to important resources. Yeah. I'll give you resources to go beyond what we cover here today. I'm going to cover a lot. And so you might want to take notes. Um, I've been building trading systems since 1991. We didn't even have software back then to do it. I had to use my own software. And I uh, built my first trading systems in a Borland Paradox database. Yeah, uh, before there was even any software to do it. And so um, I've come a long way. And so hopefully um, I can impart some uh, cool ideas for you today to help you in your system building. Uh, some key concepts first off, yeah. Um, trading system building, including theory and application. We're going to cover what's behind uh, building a good system. And then uh, we're going to look at trading system analysis. I'm going to cover some concepts in that, just broad strokes and integration of trading system analysis with Bloodhound and uh, how you can hone in on the difference that makes a difference in your trading. So we're going to cover aspects of trading system design that get you better success, robustness, and sustainability, concepts that are behind what makes a successful trading system work. Yeah. Um, first, we're going to build a uh, trading system. Yeah, it's one. Then we're going to export the results from Bloodhound from the system for analysis in smart trade markers. It's something that we use. I think you're going to like it. 
And along the way, we're going to cover some important system building analysis concepts that help you to build better systems and then the analysis. And so it's kind of like three webinars in one theory, system building, and analysis, you know, and beyond. Yeah. So what builds a good system? You know, well, <clears throat> excuse me, basically, um, I break that down into four main components, four quadrants of good system trading design. And the first one, first and foremost, is price action trend and market structure. And that includes the bar type that you're choosing. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. Order flow and order flow momentum is category number two. Number three, momentum, meaning price momentum. And support and resistance. And then there's another category I could throw in there, specialty, things that don't fit neatly into those uh, four uh, main quadrants. Yeah. Sometimes those involve feeding an indicator into another indicator that gives you information about the, the state that the indicator that you're using is in, you know, things like that, or things like what we call market mapping, where you're actually looking at the shape that the market will take on any given day, and we'll actually map that out with probabilities and everything. It's pretty cool. So first, what are the components that we're going to use? And why have we chosen them? Yeah. So when building a system, we always start with a bar type. Yeah. So most traders don't necessarily think about it too much. You know, they read a trading book and it's like, okay, I'm going to use a five minute bar. <clears throat> yeah, five minute bar. Or whatever they might have seen in a trading book or whatever. Yeah. So why? Yeah. Why is the bar type decision um, important? Well, because it's a decision as to the nature of the data that you're feeding into your indicators. Yeah. Some bar types are better um, than others for different kinds of applications, depending on the kind of system that you're building. Some bar types are themselves like indicators. Yeah. You can think of the bar type itself as an indicator due to the nature of its design. Yeah. So we could take an example, the five minute bar, you know, everybody, you know, all the trading books and everything. It's very common to see five minute bars. Yeah. Well, what's the problem with a five minute bar? Well, the ranges vary all over the place and the close of the bar is random. <clears throat> so um, a five minute bar, you know, as I've done studies on this, it only closes at its higher low about 12% of the time. You know? So where that five minute bar closes, is um, going to feed information to your uh, indicators based on where it's closing. Yeah? And that's important. So uh, here's, here's an example of a five minute bar. So you can see that the entire range on this chart, yeah, on this five minute bar, you can see the entire range on this, on this chart is, and I, I didn't necessarily you know, pick this out or anything, but just pointing out to you, there's one, two, three, four, five, five minute bars um, define the entire range of the, of the day. <clears throat> yeah. Or of, of the interval that we're looking at five bars out of all the bars that are on here. Yeah. And so that's kind of interesting because what happens uh, with a time-based bar, like five minute bar, um, it may not be related to trend a lot of the time, and at other times it may be. Um, but the basis of the bar is time. It's unrelated to trend, order flow, momentum, or support resistance. And the bar closes at random. And very often when you look at a five-minute chart, uh, if you do it the way I, I did it there, you could see, oh, well, there's just five bars that make the whole range of the day out of, you know, maybe there's 80 bars on this chart or something like that, you know. So this is a bar that we use in our trading room. Uh, it's called the Smart Super Renko. That's what I call a structured bar. That's not random. No, it's not random. Um, it's extremely related to market structure. That fits in our first quadrant, yeah? First quadrant, price action, market structure. And the bar is related to mo uh, momentum price momentum and order flow momentum both because the bar always closes at its higher low. Yeah. 
and that's important. Another thing that you'll see, uh, you'll you'll in this a bar like this, you'll see uh, certain patterns that'll occur. And what we've done is we've pattern classified all these uh, different uh, structures into um, known statistical profiles. Yeah, the bar like the Smart Super Renko. And then we've got the, uh, this is the ultimate order flow bar. This bar is based on order flow momentum. It also is not random. It'll tend to close at its high. You can see as it's going up, it's closing at its highs more or less, it's close to the low on a red bar, high on a green bar. Uh, but what, what a bar like this is gonna do is when you feed that into your indicator, it's always gonna be uh, giving you a reading that's at the extreme of the range for the interval, yeah? Whereas the, so, you know, like the five minute bar, it's, uh, could be giving you random uh, data within the uh, trend structure. Um, this bar um, and the one before the Smart Super Renko is going to feed you data at the extreme where the buying and selling pressure is its strongest. Yeah. And so that's why that's important. So <clears throat> bar type is an extremely important choice. Yeah. And it should be related to your intent. Yeah. So if you're doing like a momentum related system, probably don't wanna be using five minute bars. So today we're gonna to build a trend system that's based on momentum and order flow momentum. And we're gonna use another indicator supporting the trend. And we're gonna use a third component providing structural interpretation. Yeah. So of the four quadrants that we're talking about, we've got the bar you now, which is uh, price action and uh, momentum. And then um, in the momentum category, the bar also acts, like I was saying before, like an indicator. It's a momentum related bar type. And it is also an order flow momentum bar type. Yeah. And then we're gonna use a third component for the structural interpretation. We're gonna take wave counts. Yeah, that's essentially what we're gonna do. So for this type of a system, a, moment, a momentum and order flow uh, momentum based system of those three bar types, which one might we prefer? Yeah. And the answer is the ultimate order flow bar. Yeah. Yeah. So um, then once we got that, uh, we made a determination about our bar, and then we're going to put something on there to get the trend so that if it's chopping, um, it'll help it to. Uh, it'll help the system to stay in alignment with the with the trend. Yeah, and then um, we're going to use uh, this indicator, the smart price band, um, for adjusting to the directional price change. And historically, uh, this thing has about this indicator has about a twenty percent edge over random. You know, random being fifty percent, right? Well, it gives you, a, it adds about 20% or above random or 70% uh, as a component. So like of the three components that we're using, uh, order flow and order flow momentum, trend, you know, and then structure, this thing's going to contribute about 70% to the, uh, the overall system performance yeah, of, the, of the three of them. And I think I'm gonna cover, I got a little uh, a guideline for how that works, yeah. So then we're gonna add the smart one, two, three for the market structure. So the smart one, two, three is a special way of determining market structure that is sequential and contextual, yeah. So you get like uh, counts going higher or lower in the structure and um, we're going to take trades with that structure that's going with the trend. You know? So that, um, that indicator is going to track the price action trend counts in both the up and down directions according to the input specifications that we're going to use for the indicator, the parameters that we're going to use for the indicator. So the smart one, two, three makes it possible to see market structure on any bar type and how to know when you do not theoretically have opposing timeframes. 
and I'm going to show you something um, I had put together a system for today and I had another uh, user contribute some modifications that he made to the system and then he, he sent it over to me and I loaded his file and I'm going to uh, share that with you a little bit later um, in the webinar. Yeah. <clears throat> so this specific area of analysis has taken, it's taken me years actually to figure this out. And the areas on the chart that are trapping or trending can be seen and counted uh, with this particular tool. You know. So of the core four quadrants, again, we got the ultimate order flow bar as an order flow and order flow momentum. And then we're gonna get the smart price band in there to make sure we're not chopping. And then um, the smart one, two, three is for the price action. Yeah. So of the four quadrants, we got three out of four of them going. You could make an argument that we've got four of them going, but I just chunk these order flow and order flow momentum into uh, one category on, on its own. Yeah. So three of the four. Of them. So these indicators have an edge in and of themselves. Like we talked about smart price band, you know, being 20% above random or about 70%. Um, then, so if we're putting together a system with these kinds of uh, concepts behind it, that we've discussed up to this point without any optimization or special effort or you know op, you know optimizing back testing all that kind of stuff we've got three out of the four components of a well-designed trading system we should get a better than random result without trying to even improve it you know just when we code it up and so the system that we're going to do today i haven't optimized it i haven't back tested i haven't anything i just put it together on this concept as kind of a proof of concept, if you will, of how to build a trading system that's gonna um, give you a, a result because you built it structurally from the ground up based on the concepts that we're discussing. Um, it's, uh, it's should have a better than random result, right? So given that, we're gonna build a system, then we're gonna export it and we're gonna do some even cooler stuff, you know? So, um, so <clears throat> today we're building a technical trading system. Now, this will falls into the category of what I call a technical trading system. Uh, there's other kinds of uh, trading systems that might be called tactical. Now, technical trading systems typically involve triggering trades at points where there are known cause and effect relationships between price and an entry and metrics that are known to be predicted. The purest example of this would be arbitrage. Arbitrage is where you basically, when you enter the trade, you're locking in a known profit. Yeah. The next level of it might be predictive metrics such as uh, specifically order flow and order flow momentum. But in this particular system design, we're not really narrowing in on that on a bar level thing. So it's not pure cause and effect um, at, the, at the entry level. And for that reason, today's system that we're building leans more towards the technical side than a, um, than a tactical uh, kind of a trading system. But this is a, I, I threw this slide in here because this is an important distinction. Uh, let me see what this next slide is, guys. Yeah, so um, so we're going to build a system. Yeah, we're going to build a system in Bloodhound. Uh, these bars here that we're looking at on this screenshot um, are the ultimate order flow bars. This uh, is a smart price bands on here, and then you see these counts on here: one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You know. Now you'll, you'll notice also on this, you can have some counts that are against. You can you could get into a situation where you know it's going one two three going down or uh, one two three going up, but you might have some counts going the other way. Yeah, you could have counts going against. So for example, right here you get a three count, but it's breaking the five count, and so you know it's probably going from there. But <clears throat> um, the system won't trigger it until it um, the smart price bands have rolled rolled over. Yeah. So given that, 
Um, in the past, I when we had built system in here, um, I did it entirely from scratch. And you know, though that's kind of cool, um, I thought today uh, what I would do is um, I've already got the system built, so I'm just going to go over the. Uh, I'm going to open up Bloodhound. We're going to look at it uh, from there, and I'm going to go over uh, the way it all got <clears throat> the way it all got built. Yeah, rather than try to build it from scratch and let me wonder if I'm doing it right. So uh, here we're inside a Bloodhound. Yeah. And so what I did was I got my bar on there. I got my bar on there. And what I did here was I said, <clears throat> okay, well, if the smart price bands, I set this to a 12, I think. No. Yeah, I set it to a 12. No, smart price band set to a 12. And this looks at it to the, uh, to the long side. And then I put another one in here to look at it uh, from the short side. Yeah, there's a short side. There's also a 12. And that's the same as the bands that are on the screen. So both of them have rolled over red, uh, can take short trades. If both of them have rolled over um, going up, and it can take long trades. Yeah, so that's filtering in that respect. And then the, the other component is the smart one, two, three. And for this particular system, I'm only going to take uh, counts of three. So a lot of times when I develop an indicator, because I'm a partner with Shark, uh, what we do is we, um, we design these indicators so that they output um, their state to Bloodhound. Yeah? So it makes it super easy to code. Yeah? Because a lot of times coding could get really complicated. So what this thing is doing is, um, if it's got an up count, it can go long. If it's got a down count, it can go short. You know, I'm just using the, these are just defaults for what I had, you know, no optimization or anything. And if it gets a three count or the three count is active, it's going to uh, send a one to Bloodhound. You know? So if the smart price band is sloping up, and I got a three count going up, I'm gonna go long, yeah, right there. And if the smart price bands are sloping down and I got a minus three count going down, I'm gonna go short, yeah. And then all those go together, the and condition, yeah. So if the smart price band is sloping up, that's this one, and I got a three count going up, I'm gonna go long. And if the smart price band is sloping down and I got a negative three count going down, I'm gonna go short. Yeah, that's the whole system. Nothing more, nothing less. Simplest thing in the world. Now, I had mentioned earlier, I've been building trading systems since 1991. I have never seen, it can happen, but I've never seen a trading system that was super complex that really worked that well. Yeah. And so there's a lot to be said for simplicity, but further yet still back to the same point that we already discussed. Um, there's a lot to be said for designing from the ground up in the way we've done in this discussion. Yeah. Now, this is the whole system. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you could uh, export this into NinjaTrader. Um, <clears throat> but that gets kind of complicated. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to take, I think this is the actual chart. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now, that uh, we've gone over all the different aspects of the system. So it's just going to go long on the threes with the smart price band. It's going to go long on the threes. It's going to go short on the reds on the three, on the three counts. This three is still active the way I coded it. I could get more specific with that and narrow it down to a bar in which case it would have gone short there instead. And we'll cover some of that in a minute. Yeah, so, but uh, instead of trying to look at that in uh, NinjaTrader, uh, we're gonna export that to a program that we use called uh, Trade Markers for analysis and discussion. You know? 
And then we're also going to cover how to change your parameters quickly for further analysis. So but before we do that, what's trademarks? Yeah. So <clears throat> we do a lot of um, intraday trading in the trading room, and we narrow the trading down to a highly specific uh, things that have a, a highly specific probabilities associated with them. Yeah. And so trade markers originally, uh, what it enabled us to do is to just to simply mark the trades on the chart. Yeah. Just to mark the trades on the chart. So like I could go into, um, I could go into uh, here and I could just take all those red, I could take the red one and I could, um, I could um, uh, mark it. Yeah. Or a red one, I could mark it. Now this, this wouldn't roll over. Yeah. I'd take the, um, the red one and I could mark it. Yeah. I could mark it. Yeah. Like that. And then I could uh, pull that up and open that up and I can uh, get my result right there. Yeah, I can put the name of the system in there. I got ultimate order flow bar uh, with uh, smart price band and, um, and uh, uh, three count. Yeah. Now uh, what's cool about that is that um, is that I can uh, then do uh, my statistics on that. I can see my trades. If I want to see a specific trade, say I want to see a trade that was a loser, I can click that, and it'll just go. It'll go right to the trade. So, like if I want to analyze things that were losers, I can just pop to any point on the on the chart. Oh, I want to look at that one. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, I want to look at that one. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so um, I can look at the uh, group trades with all those three contracts in this. I can look at the overall uh, statistics for the whole system. Um, I can break it down by um, uh, the day. I can break it down by the uh, hour of the day. You know, I could go in and say, well, you know, are there certain times of the day this doesn't work so well? You know, and I could go back and uh, click the buttons that we did before. But on these advanced options, what I have here is the capability of actually loading the trades directly out of uh, Bloodhound. Yeah. I load the trades directly out of Bloodhound and just say, add the entries from Bloodhound. I could also add the exits from Bloodhound. Yeah, pretty cool, yeah. Further still, and this uh, connects, you know, I told you I was working with uh, another user earlier. I'd sent him the code for this system and he came back and he gave me um, uh, this uh, system with some modifications that he had made. So he can actually send that over to me in a file and I can actually load that up and look at his exact system using the exact same uh, things with the parameters and the uh, changes that he had made. Yeah. I, that'll go across any time frame anywhere on the planet. You know, it's pretty cool. So uh, this particular system, uh, as we've done it, just ultimate order flow bar with smart price band and a three count. Like I said, it's not a technical, it's not a tactical system. It's not trying to be that tight on it. It's just trying to catch uh, trends. So uh, this panel over here shows me what I'm doing with my contracts. You know. I have a uh, uh, three lot and it takes off uh, one at five ticks, one at uh, 10 ticks and one at 20 ticks. Yeah, you got a 20 tick stop. So I can immediately uh, go in here and I can say, well, uh, what will happen? I'm at 69.53. This panel over here is the summary. Yeah, it shows me I took 313 trades and um, that first leg uh, was 86% win rate. Yeah, 2150 of the uh, overall performance was that uh, first, first lot, yeah. Um, when we designed this, I had them put in the, uh, the edge, 
edge is a really uh, cool number because it enables us to see how much we're beating break even by. I had a $4.40 commission on here and we're beating break even by 6% for the first lot. For the second lot, we're beating it by 9%. And then we see we got a little bit of a drop there on that 20 tick. So maybe I wanna uh, try that out at 15 ticks instead of 20 and see I'm at 69.53 and I wanna see, and I'm 86.76.54 and I just recalc that. Yeah. Ooh, I jumped to uh, 86.40 when I did that. Yeah. Uh, what if I wanted to make the stop a little bit smaller? I wanted to try a 16 tick stop. We're at 86.40. Oh, shoot, man, that didn't change it very much. Yeah. Expectancy is about 72 ticks per campaign for the three lots overall. Profit factor about 1.67. Maximum favorable excursion due to the targets about $95 for median uh, favorable. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, it shows me what my adverse excursion is. By looking at these two sets of numbers, I can see whether or not uh, how efficient uh, the entries are. Because if these numbers are bigger than the, than the favorable numbers, um, then it tells me that I'm taking a lot of heat on the trades. But this is well within the acceptable uh, kind of range. Uh, I can put trailing stops on there. You know, I'm at 8,600. I put a 10 tick trailing stop on there and it goes up even higher. You know, I could put a, another, uh, I could put a trailing. This is, uh, once it goes 10 ticks, it goes to uh, break even plus one. You know, I could say, well, <clears throat> once I go 10, um, I'll trail by 10. I'm gonna try that out. Notice uh, none of these things really changing it that much. That's because the system's fairly robust. Yeah, I could put an EMA trailing stop on there. Yeah. I could flatten at the end of the day. Another thing I could do with this, if I had another system and I wanted to see how it was working with this, I could, uh, I could import that system or I could go on and uh, mark more trades and have it add to this. And then I could save that. I could send it to another user or anything like that. So one of the things that I wanted to share with you uh, on this system, so that's kind of some of the basics on uh, trade markers, yeah. But one of the um, things I wanted to share with you is I could go in uh, just on the fly, um, I could go back into our code and let's say, because I, the reason I just did that on the threes was because I wanted to be very specific. Yeah, I don't wanna just take them all, but this is enabling me to do the way I designed this system. It's enabling me to see it for any given set. So what if I decided, oh, well, what if we trade on four counts instead of threes? Yeah, that's gonna be a more developed trend if we do that, yeah. I'll do the four and then I could go in and um, I could uh, delete all these off of here and then I could um, I could re-import the system from Bloodhound. I'll go over here and I'll say advanced options. I'm gonna add the entries from uh, this changed system uh, to Bloodhound for the four counts, yeah. And then that'll give me the result for that. It's not quite as profitable, but this is kind of telling me, you know, I look at this, you know, my edge goes eight, 10, nine, it's dropping off a little bit on that third one again. Um, but what this is telling me is that the four count is also viable. Yeah, the four count is also viable. I could go in and change these things and then I just go right back over uh, to here and I could, um, I could bring up the, um, uh, Bloodhound again, and I could go in and I could say, well, shoot, man, what if I did a five count? Now, what if I traded on the five counts? As I go up the trend, the probabilities are kind of going against me, yeah, because I've counted five times now, but, you know, and throw it in there. Um, F5 chart. And I could uh, delete those off and I can re-import them. 
just takes a second, advanced options, uh, load this guy. And it looks like the five counter is still doing okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's the way uh, I can kind of go back and forth between these things and see for any specific case, what kind of probability I have. Why is that important that I would, this one's uh, still on the four count, but anyways, I think you get the gist of what I'm saying, but the, why would it be important that I would make these entries specific to which counts they are in the trend? Well, because if I do that, then I know for any given count what my probabilities are. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I do that, I can start getting into things that we call probability stacking. So let me see what we've got for this uh, next slide. I'll just go over these real quick. <clears throat> so for uh, trade markers, it gives you the ability to manually mark trades on your chart so you can analyze your entries and refine your system or to import your trades from Bloodhound for analysis, enables you to quickly determine the viability of your system. You now, just like five seconds, bam, you got it. You know, unless you load like, you know, 90 days on the chart on a bar that generates a lot of bars and it might take a little bit longer, but uh, enables you to establish a probability for your system for use in probability stack. Now, I wanna tell you, uh, there is a, <clears throat> There is a, uh, a method called Bayes' theorem, Bayes' theorem. So if I have an independent um, entry that I've coded, then the probability for that entry to say five ticks is 84%, then I know that, you know, we covered earlier, okay, well, the smart price band has given us 70, yeah. And then the, uh, between the, uh, the order flow bar and the, and the uh, uh, smart price band, I'm getting 84 total, yeah, 84 total for that to, uh, to five ticks. And then I'm getting 72 to 10 ticks and 60 to, um, 15 ticks, yeah. But if, I, <clears throat> if I'm entering a trade at a minimum, if I know it's going in my favor by at least five ticks, 84% of the time, then what I call that is a manageable trade situation. Yeah, manageable trade situation. I could set this to uh, go to a break even at, at uh, six ticks. That doesn't change the system that much. When I do that, what, look what happens. I get 84% on that first one, but because I went to a break even at six ticks, I lock in at 79%. Uh, percent. And then look what happens to my edge on those remaining legs. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's interesting about this is uh, when you go over to Blackbird or just a NinjaTrader ATM, these are actually your inputs to the, to the ATM. This is designed around that. And so you take these exact numbers and you can put them, uh, put them in there uh, for that. But it looks like on this particular system, I might wanna go to a break even pretty quickly and then lock in a really nice edge for the remaining legs. Yeah. And so it gives me a pretty uh, quick handle um, on you know, what, I'm, what it is that I'm working with. So in probability stacking, I might've put a slide on here for it, but I'll just cover it right here. If I've got three 75s, yeah, three components that are 75% each, or if I've just got two of them, that uh, takes me to 90%. Yeah, so I would uh, handle this as one of the inputs. And if I had another, that's why I said you can use trade markers to add another system on top of it. If I'm getting uh, two systems that are happening at the same time to these probabilities, then I'm either getting simultaneous or I'm getting sequential probabilities to continue, you know, which will take you on into these, uh, these areas. You know? And so that can be a real uh, game changer for you. But the general rule is this, if I got but I just use 75 because I won't accept anything less than 75. If something's less than 75, I'm not interested in it. Yeah. Or at least 68, but generally 75. 
If I have 275s, I'm playing for 90%. If I get 375s, I'm playing for 96%. Yeah, probability stacking. Awesome um, concept for uh, building trading systems. Now, so what else can trade markers do? Well, it lets you save your results and you can collaborate with other uh, users across time zones. We already talked about that. Enables you to join or combine systems on the same chart. We talked about that. Enables you to edit the exported or manual mark trades on the chart. Remember how I showed you, you click it and it goes right to the trade. Well, I could delete that off of there or I could move it, yeah. And so what that's letting me do is letting me get down to the actual execution level um, that's happening on the chart. And because I'm doing that visually, I can understand how the trades, um, uh, what, what it's like uh, for them experientially. I'll tell you another cool thing that trade markers does. If you mark a trade on a chart live, it'll update it live. Now, I love that feature of it. So you can paper trade <clears throat> with trade markers with your system in Bloodhound, either, either uh, with it in Bloodhound using um, you know, automation within Bloodhound, but you can also manually mark it on the chart and it'll carry your trade through and show you uh, uh, how, it be, uh, how it behaved uh, live. Yeah, I love that feature. So it enables you to set trades based on bar closes, <clears throat> exact entries, and exits also. Yeah. So <clears throat> trade markers versus, you know, what's the advantages of trade markers over like doing this with a ninja trader? Ninja trader, uh, in my experience, kind of cumbersome. You couldn't really go back and forth and do these kinds of things that we're doing here and really get down to the nitty gritty of it. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, but trade markers is easier uh, for testing your targets and your stop strategies. You got three profit targets, initial stop loss value, break even stop, trailing stops, the EMA stop, we discussed all these things, yeah. Importing the indicator based on exits and bloodhound, sharing with other users, and quickly alter parameters and retesting, yeah. So what might have taken hours and hours and hours or even days to do, you can now uh, do it in, you know, with this kind of capability. You can do it in just a few minutes. So um, this kind of a working environment, it lets you analyze countless factors when adding and removing trade entries, exits based on all that information. Yeah. And it supports, uh, can be used, you know, if you're a discretionary trader, can really help you to hone in on it. <clears throat> And that's not, you know, if you do discretionary trading, um, you know, the automated method will often give a very different kind of result if you code it up. Yeah. So this approach can also be used to quickly modify the template and you can analyze all the signals. Yeah. So and we save the data file. I think we already covered all these. Yeah. So we can analyze our winners and losers real quickly. Um, <clears throat> we talked about the edge already. Um, you can see how at a glance how effective the system is. Yeah. I put in here a lot on trade markers because the capabilities are just insane. But um, I didn't want to spend too much of the uh, webinar just on this, but I wanted to get the information to you. So this was one, I pasted this in here. Uh, maybe this was uh, yesterday. This is one of the variations uh, of, of the system that we just looked at with the 20 tick stop and everything. We honed this into some better values, yeah. Um, so if your result is good, you can use a method uh, with other methods. We talked about that, yeah. And this is, I'm summing up a uh, base theorem right here, 75% win rate. And you have another system that's happening at the same point on the chart. That's 90, 90%. If you add a third one, it's 96%. If you add a fourth one, you're up to 99% theoretical win rate. Yeah. This is called Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem is huge. I teach that daily in a trading room. Yeah. Um, sometimes they don't exactly line up, and that's what can make coding a uh, hard coded um, mechanical trading systems difficult because. It's, it can become really complicated to um, 
to code um, non entirely simultaneous stack probabilities. Yeah. But when you do get this kind of stacking, it can be a real game changer for you. Yeah. Sometimes in the trading room, we have three, four, five, six, seven of these things all lined up at the same time. Yeah. I could get into some other details of that, but I won't. But why do we do that? Well, because if one of them fails, let's say I got four things on my chart that tell them, tells me I'm going, but one of them is entirely failed. Well, where am I? Well, I'm still at 96. Yeah. What if I'm, I got four things on my chart all lined up at the same time and two of them have completely failed? Not likely the way we're designing, but I'm still at 90%. Yeah. That's why this is important. Yeah. So. So like I said earlier, um, I didn't do any optimization. We took it and we optimized a bit, but uh, we started with the system that I had done initially. Yeah, I'll we'll go, we improved the system a little bit. Now, could the system be improved code-wise? Well, certainly it could, yeah. So uh, what we have here, uh, we've just taken broad strokes. We built the system based on solid um, known system building concepts, the four quadrants, yeah. So there's a huge difference between this kind of approach and data mining or bulk optimization or back testing, you know. And uh, like I said, um, we cover these kinds of concepts in a trading room every day, you know, in all different kinds of uh, different ways. So um, I could do it now. I had, uh, like I said, I was collaborating with another user earlier. I sent my code over to him and I said, hey, you want to mess around with this? He goes, sure. Yeah. And so let's see what he did. Yeah. He took my basic system, which was just these three nodes, and he added on my suggestion I said, well, why don't you um, why don't you try it so that there's no opposing counts? So it'll only take the trade if the opposing count on the um, it'll only take the trade if the opposing count is a one or if you're through a one. You could also code this system to trade breakouts on ones. Yeah, trading breakouts on ones. Yeah. You could code the system that way if you wanted to. It'd be an entirely different system though. So what he did was he coded this thing up. So it said, well, if you've got uh, an opposing count that's greater than one, then don't take the trade. And then the other one he did, I'd mentioned this earlier, said, okay, well, I'm only gonna do it on reversal bars. So I don't, because if you notice that first system, we had some that fired after the, after the trigger. Cause like if the smart price band changed, it would get into the trade, you know, theoretically late. So he put this filter on there and let's take a look. He sent that file over to me. How did he send the file over to me? Um, he sent the file over to me here and I just loaded it. I load trade marker and settings. So let's see what kind of result uh, he got uh, with doing some of his refinements. Yeah. Um, he got this thing up to 85%. Now uh, he was using a 20 tick stop. What would happen? We could let's take the, the break even stop off. Uh, uh, the break even stops contributing a good bit. So we probably want to keep that. What if we drop this guy down to 16 ticks for the stop? 7,800 got a little bit better. What if we drop it down to 12? Now uh, that cuts the um, performance about 40%. So I don't want to go smaller than 16. We could get into a big discussion about stops, but um, that might be a little bit uh, beyond what we want to do. Uh, break even stop at 10 ticks, oh, 9,100, by not taking the opposing counts. Now, going back to the original concept, would I expect that the system would perform better where I have opposing counts? And the answer is yes, I would, because if I've got opposing counts, it means I'm what? Chopping. Yeah, I'm chopping. What if we drop this down to a break even at six, like we did with the other one? Uh, drops it a lot. So when you're doing the opposing counts, you want to give it some uh, some breathing room. You know, does that make sense? Oh, sure it does. Yeah. So we could call this one uh, ultimate order flow bars, uh, smart price band, smart one two three, and no opposing. 
Now we could go into his parameters and mess around with them and do different kinds of opposing counts and all that kind of stuff. But I think you get the gist of, of uh, what we're, uh, what we're dealing with here. Yeah. You know, so um, let's see what else I got here for you. So everything that we discussed so far, you know, can be used to achieve results like, you know, what we're seeing here without optimization or any of that kind of stuff, really, you know, based on a good solid design. So that was the number one point I wanted to get. Base your system design on good principles of the four quadrants. We teach that in your trading room daily. And throw that stuff into trade markers so you can get down to the execution level analysis going back and forth a couple few times. You'd know pretty much instantly whether or not it's viable. It should be viable. So if it's not viable, maybe you know something's wrong or something's wrong with the way you're thinking. So it's a great teaching tool as well because it's feeding back to you what works. You know? You know, and again, a lot of times uh, with this kind of a setup, you can do in minutes. I had uh, one guy got uh, trademarkers a while back and he came back and he goes, wow, what used to take me days to do, I can now do in minutes. You know? oh, what's another key point with trademarkers? It, let, it lets you test the way you trade. That's no small thing. You should always be trading the way you've tested. You know? Because if you're not, you're kind of going off the rails. Yeah, you're on tilt. You know? So when you're trading, you want to make sure you're getting the execution that the system's based on. Now, with a system like this, where it goes, you know, 15, 20 ticks or whatever, it's not as critical. But on some kind of systems, it might be more critical. And by looking at the results, you can kind of tell. You know? I'd mentioned this too. You can use trade markers to trade live. You click it live. And at the end of the day, you can check all your trades. You know, awesome way of sim trading. And it gives you full statistics at the end of the day. You're like, how did I do today? Boom, click the button, there it is. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so let's uh, kind of do a little review here, yeah? So we've covered system building theory and application of the four main, main quadrants. We didn't use the support resistance quadrant. We could throw that into the equation, but this... Um, support resistance, that's a whole nother topic, yeah. Support resistance, um, I consider those kinds of things to be pulling. And there's certain kinds of support resistance. There's support resistance where the probability of it going to it is increasing as you go. And there's other kinds of support and resistance that are decreasing as you go. That's an important distinction, yeah. Because if you've got accelerating probability as you go, um, you know, you can possibly, um, your, your chances of holding out uh, for a target are increasing. You know, especially if you've got signals that are stacking on the way. You know? So we've covered building a basic trading system in Bloodhound. We exported the results for analysis. We covered how to use your research to stack with other systems. And because of the, you know, this little one hour webinar here, I can't cover everything. Uh, but <clears throat> be aware that something that I might just say as a glib kind of statement or something uh, might have years and years of like, you know, a lot of thinking behind it and a lot of experience. So, but these kinds of broad strokes of uh, system building are foundational elements that I would urge that you will use when you're coding stuff up in Bloodhound and everything to build things on these kinds of principles. And I cover these kinds of concepts in the trading room daily. Because my career, my life, you know, I've, I've been very blessed to live the life of a trader, have a lot of uh, freedom. Uh, another thing about all these tools is I didn't develop the tools to sell them. I developed the tools because I'm using them now. But then what's cool is because we have a trading room, people ask me questions, you know. A lot of times the simplest question on the trading room turns into amazing things, you know? And so, um, but a day doesn't go by where I'm not learning something, you know? I can't think of a single day, you know? So <clears throat> there's a lot of other patterns that we teach and um, mainly in the trading room, like I said, we use the, uh, the Smart Super Renko, yeah? I put it as 
just infinite combinations of systems together using the quadrants that we've discussed. You know, many of these have really good theoretical hit rates, predictive value, can add to other signals. Yeah, 275 is 90, 3 is 96, 4 is 99. You know. And um, I call these the smart patterns trading systems or collections of uh, trading tools. Yeah. So when you trade this way that we're talking about, it's not like your usual kind of stuff. You know. And this kind of a system design is inclined to stand the test of time. And I, you know, I just said it in passing, but like I said, you know, if you got four things lined up and you're, you're at the 99% and two of them failed, you're still at 90. Yeah. So it's a lot better than traditional methods of uh, building trading systems because the statistics each stand on their own independently the way we've designed the way we built the trading system you know we got very specific like we did the three count oh we did the four count now and based fundamentally on the way market works yeah how's the market work uh, there's price action there's order flow order flow momentum momentum support resistance yeah. four quadrants yeah so you get the independent, uncorrelated, simultaneous probabilities that are stacked. Holy moly, look at that sentence. <laughs> independent. Yeah. So we design for independence. The system stands on its own. Anything else stacking up with it, we can uh, have a pretty good idea we're getting stacking. Yeah. Like I said, sometimes five, six, seven, or even more of those things happening all at the same time. So everything else on the charts that we're using here is highly integrated, very intentional. Yeah, it's taken decades. You know, getting to every component that we're using is, we know exactly what it's contributing, why it's contributing it. Yeah. And uh, that tens of thousands of hours <clears throat> of live observation. So like we, I, I did it the other day or in the trading room, you know, I'm like, how long we've we been doing this guys? Yeah, it's 5.5 trading hours a day for seven years. It's 10,000 hours. Yeah. But then you get uh, members uh, contributing. They've spent 10,000 10, hours and everybody spent 10,000 hours. And um, it's really uh, been amazing. The, the leap in knowledge that we've had, even in the last six months, is, uh, is pretty astounding. Yeah. That's my opinion. So, uh, summing up, markets fundamentally oriented around certain structural quadrants, patterns and order flow, momentum, price action, support, resistance, align with these principles. Why? Because they're fundamental. When they align, you tend to get follow through and stacking. Just that simple. Like everything is like on this page. Yeah. The methods fundamentally exploit what is likely to occur entirely based on the way the market moves and works. Yeah. So, if uh, what I'm talking about today, um, you know, if you're like, wow, that's pretty cool, I want to learn more about that, well, consider joining a trading room. You know, I'll, I'll give you a resources page in a few minutes. Got some cool stuff on there. Um, so oil trading room is a live application. There's all kinds of training and, um, and the stuff that we have in there. Um, but we think it's the best way to learn and advance your skills because it's a live trading environment. And we're talk talking about everything contextually. Now, like when the market's really choppy, you know, it can be a lot more difficult to read these kinds of things than when it's trending cleanly, when you've got clean market structure and everything else. So, there's some recent comments uh, from users in a trading room. You, know, uh, you can see that on the oil trading room uh, website. I'm gonna give you a link for that in a minute. We're in the process of uh, rebuilding our website, uh, like um, just like been redoing everything. And we have a lot of really cool new products, developments, upgrades. Um, so this whole uh, thing, I'm gonna get to your questions in a minute guys, but. So check this out, guys. Um, when we first started converting to NinjaTrader 8, um, I paid a programmer a bunch of money to convert the indicators. Well, NinjaTrader 8, let's talk about NinjaTrader 8 just for a moment. The capabilities within NinjaTrader 8 are utterly staggering. 
utterly staggering. So it took, it actually took me four years to convert our indi indicators from NinjaTrader 7 to NinjaTrader 8. Yeah, thousands of hours, thousands of hours. I'm not saying that to go, oh, well, Rob, you know, poor Rob. <laughs> but what the reason I am saying it is because when we discovered the capabilities within NinjaTrader that I'd say just a huge number of users don't have any clue of, what, of what's in there. We just kept refining, 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 refining. Keith asked me when, when we met up to do the webinar today, he goes, what have you been doing? I'm like, well, I, just, <laughs> I haven't done hardly any webinars for like several years because like 100% of my, um, of my uh, uh, focus has been in the development of, of, of the tools, yeah. But we finally got the NinjaTrader 8 conversion all uh, wrapped up uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so um, uh, the new website's gonna go live, hopefully in the next few days. Um, pretty much everything on there is in order. And so I'm gonna give you like a sneak preview of the new site today. Yeah. It's still on the staging site, but it's entirely functional. And so uh, the way you get there, if you go to indicator smart backslash S123 for smart123, that will um, that'll take you to uh, the new website. Yeah, but specifically, it'll take you to a resources page. It, co it, it shows you, well, what are the indicators we use today? You can learn a little bit about those if you want to. Uh, there's a, a, a file I put on there for uh, smart trade markers. It has like all the different, uh, you know, like bullet points in there down towards the bottom of the page. And um, uh, then there's some other uh, resources in there for you. Um, but if, you know, if you like, uh, you know, if you like the kinds of thinking that's going on in today's webinar, um, join the trading room. And, um, and you might also, if you like the content that we did today, um, if you go to Oil Trading Room and you go to social, go join the YouTube channel. And that way, when we post uh, uh, videos and stuff, you'll, you'll get them automatically. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's another um, link on the, on the websites where you can get on our mailing list and stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be informed when there's events and things like that. Yeah. So... Uh, but uh, the link is indicatorsmart.com backslash S123. And that takes you into the new website and everything that's in there. Yeah. So uh, don't use that staging. You don't have to use the staging one. Uh, let me go back up. Oh, that's not going to let me add it. I can add it from over here. Yeah. You don't have to do staging. Just indicatorsmart.com backslash 123. And then... Um, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming in and giving me an opportunity to share a little bit about what I do um, and what I uh, love doing. Yeah. So uh, that being said, well, here's, here's, so Greg is asking, Hey Rob, do you, do you call your trade entries and exits live in the trading room? So here's the thing, Greg, um, we just uh, discussed, um, for an hour, uh, how we have these structural things. What I'm doing in a trading room is I'm pointing out all those things happening on the charts. And, you know, if they're stacked according to your liking, then you can take the trade. Um, and so that's the way I do it. Why? Because there are literally, if you went through the combinational possibilities for all the different signals that we have, just on the trap trader oscillator alone, we got like 30 different signals. There's no way that I can track all of it. That's how advanced it's gotten. And so am I, am I talking about the trades that are setting up on the screen? Absolutely. Am I calling them out? I'm not saying buy at this price. Uh, at the beginning of the day, I put the trigger levels on the chart. Um, and if you need help, you can ask. Um, but I can't possibly get them all. We got people in the room that are um, doing themes and variations and uh, all that kind of stuff. But there's literally so many signals that, you know, a lot of my uh, lecture in the last couple of months has been, well, where don't we have a signal? You know, start thinking about it in a completely opposite way. 
not where is there a signal, where isn't there one? Yeah, that's how many signals we have. It'll literally be like in the thousands of different possibilities. Yeah, and so um, let me speak on that just for a moment because this is a really good question that Greg asked. Um, it's really important. You have to decide what you're focusing on. Yeah, you have to decide what you're focusing on. I got, I got two or three setups that I'm focusing on mostly. It might not be your thing, but if you need help with your thing, I will drop everything I'm doing and I'll help you. Yeah. So, uh, so Herman's asking, oh, will this work on Golden uh, NQ? Yeah, you bet it will. Um, you bet it will. I may not have um, the exact probabilities, but like every all the concept we discussed, we could have built the system on NQ or ES. Yeah, we could have. Um, I just happened to put it up on crude oil. Uh, we also have a stock index trading room. They got uh, signals over there um, using the same concepts. Yeah. So uh, typically what I will say is that the concepts that we're talking about will work in any reasonably volatile market. You don't want to be doing this stuff in a super choppy uh, market or a non-directional market. Uh, I could actually do a whole webinar on the topic of how markets develop their range for the day. Now we're talking about shape of day things, kind of market mapping kinds of concepts. I teach that in the trading room. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Kevin says we're stealing money. <laughs> um, yeah, so Keith is saying it took them a long time. And I know it took them a long time to upgrade. And we even had meetings with Jeremy um, because of the impossibility of the upgrade. But boy, when we, got a, uh, when we got a handle on it, we started discovering stuff we could do that was just like mind boggling. So I paid this guy like five grand to convert the indicators. It was utterly worthless. <laughs> and I've spent at least three times more than that with all the conversion. Yeah. I'm not telling you that because I'm like, oh, Rob spent all that money. No, I'm not telling you because of that. I'm telling you that that's how uh, capable NinjaTrader 8 is. And as we discovered those capabilities, it was just like, wow, wow. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Timothy. Timothy's saying this is the best presentation he's ever seen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, Thank you, Douglas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Douglas. Nice uh, comments from uh, attendees. Yeah. So uh, let me see. There's three more down here. Smart Superenco, Ultimate Order Flow Bars, your own creation. Uh, no, all those are my own creation, Neil. Yeah. And the design behind them and the, the reasoning behind them. Anytime I build an indicator, well, where do we start? Four quadrants. Yeah. Yeah four quadrants. So everything we design, as I said a few minutes ago, everything that's on the chart is highly intentional. Yeah. I'm not saying that to sound cool. I'm saying it because it's true. <laughs> Did it take a long time to get there? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. But, um, you know, Einstein said, <laughs> Albert Einstein said, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result <laughs> is, the definition of insanity. Well, yeah, so that's what I did. <laughs> and then I started eventually getting a different result. My first trading system, guys, the one that made it possible for me to live my life as a trader is seven years. Yeah. When I started trading, man, I lost money. Yeah. And then I was like, wow, I can't let that ever happen to me again. And I'm the, like the most stubborn guy. Don't ask my wife. <laughs> She'll say, no, he's more stubborn than that. I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked seven years. And I finally came up with a trading system that worked. Yeah. And then um, wind of it got to a brokerage firm in New York. And I get this call one day that goes, Hey, I got 600 brokers who work for me. You know, at the time I was a chef, I owned a restaurant. My background was as a chef, but I mean, I've been developing a trading system since 1991, but, but anyways, he, uh, you know, I pick up the phone, the guy goes, hi, my name is, I'm not going to say his name, you know. but anyway, he goes, hi, my name is such and such. He goes, do you know who I am? And I go, no, I don't know who you are. He goes, look, I own a brokerage firm. we got 600 brokers working for us. We want to raise money for you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, the next thing I know, there's more money coming in, money flying all over the place. I got no, 
<laughs> you know, I mean, okay, uh, hand in your knife and your tongs, <laughs> and and now you're now you're a commodity trading advisor. Yeah, and so that's why and how I became the biggest e mini trader in the world because we were trading at the time. Um, all, all told, we're trading about six or seven thousand lots in the in the e minis. Yeah, pretty crazy. We don't do that nowadays. Um, now I'm kind of like semi-retired, really, and I just do the trading room and um, and uh, develop the indicators in my own trading. Well, so, like I said, most of these indicators were developed. Uh, were developed uh, for my own use and then the use of our members and everything else. We have a really nice community there. So anyways, that's really uh, what I have for you. Hopefully some of these concepts will help you to build better systems. Yeah. And go to indicatorsmart.com backslash S123 to see the new website and the resources page there. Yeah. Any other questions before I wrap it up? Oh, trading room hours uh, be run from uh, about 8.55 uh, New York time until what, 2.30 New York time daily? Yeah. Yeah, Kevin's saying seven years in the trading room. We got, uh, we got members have been there since day one and it's been a journey, yeah? Uh, Kevin's saying seven years in the trading room making a living now doing it. And if this is the Kevin that I think it is, <laughs> we put down about six bottles of French Bordeaux one night <laughs> in Nice, France. And he said, Rob, you got to help me to become a successful trader. And so Kevin, it uh, brings me in yeah, red wine. <laughs> it brings me great joy to hear you say that. Yeah, thank you. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, so on the trading room, uh, the coupon code there is black gold 249. And it's not the cheap room. We're not doing indicator promotion there. We're not trying to sell you something. It's a professional room. And uh, so, you know, I charge a little bit more, keep riffraff out. <laughs> Don't mean to put it in a rude way, but um, our community is not huge there. And that's intentional. Yeah. But use uh, a coupon code, code black gold 249 at the oil trading room and uh the video there i'll tell you that too but yeah so all right guys if that's what you got i'm going to hand it back over to keith keith thanks for having me today and thanks everybody for sharing a little bit of your afternoon um a little bit of your afternoon uh with me and let me share what i do and what i love yeah okay thank you keith Great, Rob. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's um, I had to step away for a few minutes there and I come back to all these compliments. It's, you know, Douglas, uh, right at the end, has said, you know, the trading room, I assume is what he's talking about, is worth a million times more than you charge. Um, yeah, just compliment after compliment. This is the, the best uh, presentation I've ever seen. <laughs> um, yeah, Doug. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think Doug was uh, talking or referring back to yesterday when I mentioned that you're going to be probably covering more meat and potatoes. Um, for our final guest uh, speaker this week. And he definitely agrees. That's, that's what, what he got. So really glad that, um, that you're, you're um, very consistently uh, providing great, great value um, for, for any audience that you talk to. So that's, that's really awesome. I'm, I'm glad people were able to, to enjoy that. Um, all right, guys, we're, we're heading towards the final presentation. Um, if you've been in previous shark weeks, you know, that it is us, it is shark indicators presenting on the final day, lucky Friday, the 13th. So we'll see how that goes. Um, it is for, in my opinion, if you're going to come back tomorrow, we're thinking about it, it is for three different types of people. So first of all, current bloodhound owners, um, the a bulk of what we're going to be talking about is actually a sneak peek at upcoming changes. So it's actually going to be the most substantive visual change. Um, this is just a little sneak peek uh, before the sneak peek. It's going to be a, the most substantive visual change we've ever made to any of our products. Um, Bloodhound, I, I, he, he gave me a rundown. I don't remember the details exactly, but the entire Bloodhound interface is going to look different sometime in the coming months once we get it up to our standards. So that'll be a nice preview of what you're going to see. 
the second type of person is interested buyers. Um, if you've been in, in our world, you know this very well. We don't discount our products um, basically ever, except for Shark Week and Black Friday. So we're not one of those that are constantly offering discounts everywhere we go. We already have great prices by industry standards. And, and you know that if you've been in our world. So if you are interested or thinking about buying Bloodhound or Blackbird or anything we sell, tomorrow is a great time to come in and see what we have to offer. Um, and then also, if you're just curious about Shark Indicator's backstory um, and Jeremy's backstory, Jeremy is the CEO, he's the founder, he's the programmer of just about everything we built, almost everything. Um, and so if you're kind of curious about uh, kind of what got him into this in 2011 and, and you know, our origin story, uh, and you just want to hang out, ask questions, shoot the shit, you know, whatever, um, just come on back in. And uh, uh, we're just looking forward to closing this out uh, really strong. So anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Rob, unless you have anything else for us, me, the audience, um, we will bid you a good evening. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.